Hello, everybody. Today is our third day discussing the harm being brought upon children and adults alike in the church because of horrible policy, bad policy. You know, today is also the third day of a fast for me, so I'm uh, feeling a little bit of hunger. You know, I think my record is three days, and I'm on my third day, and my goal is five days. But anyways, uh, you know, I want to start out today to, uh, to invite uh, President Nelson, because we know he is the prophet, seer, and revelator. And only the prophet, the prophet, can make policy change. So my conversation with him today is directly with with President Nelson. And with that, you know, I'm inviting you, President Nelson, to come down and meet with me. I'm not your enemy. We love the the Merritt Mormon people, both of us. We want to keep children safe. We love the culture. We both do. We're not enemies. We should be on the same team with this conversation. You know, President Nelson, I support the cause of righteousness. That's not changed. That's not changed at all. I support much of the mission of the church. I support uh, uh, chaste families, strong families. I support children that aren't doing drugs and or alcohol. I support clean language and, and a clean life. I support these things. And... I believe you do as well, and, and I believe that those who preceded you support those things as well, and they, they came up with policy in an effort to, to try to strengthen that cause. They came up with a medicine to try to strengthen the cause of righteousness and morality, but sometimes the medicine offered is more dangerous and harmful than, than the illness itself. They came up with something they believed would, would, be, would work, but it's not working. And you, as a prophet, seer, and revelator, uh, revelator of this church and the president of the Latter-day Saint Church, it's your job to go and pray and gather more inspiration, to work it out in your mind, President Nelson. Nobody else can do this. Only you can work this out in your mind and change the policy. You need to go and uh, draw from new research, new knowledge. You know, we're not stoning people anymore either. A prophet, seer, and revelator instructed people to be stoned, I believe. The Law of Moses had all kinds of instructions that we don't do anymore because a greater knowledge as, as humanity advances brings new truths and new policy change. President Nelson, the men that came before you probably did the best they could. But now new truths have came came to this conversation. And what only thing that matters here is not me, and really it's not you that matter. It's what is true. That's what matters, President Nelson. You know, the truth is, and I'm just going to be frank with you, you quietly got with almost 90% of members of the church, and they all know that these, these worthiness interviews are, are, are not any good. They go in there and they... Nobody wants to go do a worthiness interview because it's an invasion of a person's privacy in a way that it's, it's harmful often. It's, it's not in, done in a tone that it often in a way that benefits. It's more like an interrogation than a, a moment of love and conversation. You know, these worthiness interviews could be changed around. They could be changed to a more beneficial tone. Instead of interrogating a child about as young as eight years old about all kinds of sensitive topics, you could change this, President Nelson, to something that's more of a pastoral. Let the child decide when it's time for them to acknowledge their sin. Simply teach them the truth. Isn't this what Joseph did have taught? Teach them the correct principles and they will not depart thereafter. He didn't say teach correct principles, go and interrogate them to make sure they're living them, and they will follow thereafter. That's that's the wrong side of the conversation, according to my Mormon understanding. My Mormon bring up, this is what Satan wanted. He wanted to force all to do right. An interrogation is not is not what even the church teaches. It's more like what I would expect in the, uh, the Soviet Union, people being interrogated and in fear, terrified. This is not healthy. You know, unfortunately, I didn't understand, began to understand these truths 
until it was too late, President Nelson. It was too late. You know, I, I lost a son to suicide, and honestly, I had no idea why. As soon as I heard the news that he he, he died, I, immediately I wanted to know why. I had no idea why. In his suicide notes, he says it was the church is why. The night before he died, he said what he believes is harming him. His words, right there, what he believes is harming him. And that night that he died, I went to try to find out immediately what happened to him. And what I came across is the story of Kip Eliasson, a young man that it was shamed literally to death over worthiness interviews, and he was sent to a mental health professional that didn't follow his training but followed your guidance or the predecessor, your predecessor's guidance. That young man died. I didn't know that. I learned from a whole bunch of other links that there were several testimonies of people saying they were harmed by these worthiness interviews. I didn't know that until it was too late. It was the night my son died is when I learned that. A parent shouldn't have to learn the truth when it's too late, President Nelson. And you know something? I recognized that harm so quickly. Once I read it, I it was instant I understood how it had harmed him. You want to know why, President Nelson? Because I remember my own life and my own interviews as a child. I remember being a 12-year-old, an innocent child, going into a worthiness interview with a, a bishop that I knew didn't care about me and didn't love me. He was actually an attorney as well. And in that worthiness interview, President Nelson, this bishop came at me as a prosecuting attorney at 12 years old. And in that interview, at a young, tender, 12 years old, innocent 12 year old, he asked me so many questions about sex, uh, about, uh, you know the questions. Do I even, I'm embarrassed to even ask some of these questions. Masturbation, necking, petting, those questions went on for years. And when I was 12, I had no idea what most of those even were. I was traumatized by that interview. That bishop traumatized me, and it made me fearful of those interviews forever. You know, it, it's, it's not healthy. You know something, President Nelson?